Hey everybody, welcome back. My name is Andrew Robinson. And before we get into today's video, I just wanna say, I hope everyone out there is doing well, taking care of yourselves and taking all of the necessary precautions that are being asked of you in this time of need. It really is, it's a time of need and that we all need to do what we can in order to keep ourselves healthy and safe as well as others. So I do hope that all of you watching this uh, are doing what it is that you are responsibly enabled to do and that you yourselves are well and we're going to get through this. We're just going to get through this and Christy and I send our best to all of you and we just want to also thank you so much for continuing to watch and support us in that way and we will continue to support you guys in the best ways that we know how by creating something that maybe you find useful, helpful, or at the very least distracting from all of the other stuff that I'm sure you will be inundated with in the coming days and weeks. So I just wanted to say that, I wanted to get that out of the way because it's important that we stay vigilant, but it's also important that we don't lose sight of you know, things that can uplift us and bring us joy, which is what I want today's video to kind of be about. Because last week I created a video of the top 10 tracks that I used over the course of my career in order to demo audio equipment. And some of you commented uh, from that video stating that, hey, what about home theater demos? So that's what today's video is going to be about. Here are my 10 best home theater demos, according to me, that I've used over the years. Now, Battleship is not what I would call a good movie or even a remotely great one, but it can be a fun ride in the right situation or if you're in the right kind of mood. And there is a sequence that breaks between the second and third act of that film whereby the heroes get a antique battleship, if you will, up and running to fight the aliens. Yes, Battleship is about the U.S. military fighting aliens. And the entire sequence of getting this museum piece up and running and ready for battle, as far-fetched as it is, is set to ACDC's Thunderstruck. And this scene or sequence or montage has everything that you will want in a home theater demo. Great surround sound effects, great sense of spaciousness between all of your loudspeakers. It is a subwoofer workout. And it is also a great set, has great dynamics throughout. This is a whole sequence, therefore, that isn't necessarily about focusing on one thing. It's about the gravity and the scale of everything that's unfolding around you. And it kind of peaks right at the end when they set to set out to sea and our hero walks up the gantry and it's all this one long take and he looks out into the ocean right as the ship crashes down on the waves and that sequence that moment really should have a visceral impact in your in your bowels in your chest while you're sitting there watching it you should feel that impact and everything in that sequence should be leading up to that kind of crescendo and slam thus ending the second act and bringing us into the third act. And that is why Battleship, the Thunderstruck montage, has been a part of my home theater demo staple list for so many years. Number two is a movie that not a lot of people saw. And again, much like Battleship, I would argue maybe isn't even really that great of a film. But it does have some rather good musical sequences, and I am actually a big fan of musicals. And while you may you may sit there and look at it and go, oh, I know why you picked this one, I assure you it's not for the reasons that you are thinking. Of course, that means I am talking about Burlesque, the movie Burlesque, starring Christina Aguilera and Cher, but more specifically the Express sequence, or the Express song. Now, this, again, is a song with a lot of really, really great dynamics. And I mean low bass with good impact as well as very high frequency snaps that if your speakers are more on the forward side, more on the revealing side, this is a track that brings that out and will let you know just how brutal or just how unforgiving your tweeters can be. And this is why this track has been a staple in my arsenal for so long. Because the finger snaps in the song express, if your tweeters are forward, if your speakers are harsh, 
they will be punishing to your eardrums at any real kind of heightened volume. But if they kind of have a nice little snap to them, but you can hear a little bit of that that skin on skin contact and decay, your tweeters are up to snuff. But again, the bass shouldn't be rumbly. It should have nice taut rhythmic uh, impact. And of course, Christina's vocals are Christina's vocals. Although they are particularly hot during the recording of this track. So she does some of her lyrics, some of the vocals in this track do tickle the, the, the clipping uh, range, if you will, of the microphones. And again, if your tweeters, if your speakers are forward or a little bit harsh or tipped up towards the, the treble region, this can sound very kind of unforgiving and fatiguing. And so while it's not the best recording uh, or best demo in that respect, it also kind of tells you where your speakers may lie in, say, the frequency range in terms of neutrality. If they're a little bit hot or more rolled off on the top end, this is a great, great, great uh, sequence with which to test that. Sticking with musicals, we're actually going to go with one of my favorite musicals of all time, and that is Baz Luhrmann's Moulin Rouge. I love this movie from start to finish. I think it's a fantastic demo, both sonically and visually. The sequence that I have used more than any to demo speakers for home theater use has been the Roxanne Tango. And much like Express, much like even the Thunderstruck montage in Battleship, this is all about scale and, and dynamics because the song goes from quiet to loud to small, to grand. And it's just this, again, there's not really any one thing in particular that I would necessarily say to focus on other than towards the end of the song when Ewan McGregor is singing midst all the chaos, he should still be locked in center of the screen. His vocals should be in the middle of your room, somewhat forward, and everything that he is saying should be intelligible midst the chaos. Like that's the most uh, particular note that I will give about this this little sequence. But other than that, again, high frequency uh, detail, air, and attack mixed with very nice low frequency uh, impact. But it's just about scale. And if this scene isn't your cup of tea, I understand. But if it is, in my estimation, a speaker system that does this scene right should give me goosebumps all up and down my neck and if it doesn't if it doesn't move me in that way then i just kind of that's not a speaker that i gravitate to or it's not a system uh synergy that i gravitate to and that's why this particular sequence has been on my list since like the beginning of time Next, next up on this list is something that's all about nuance and subtlety, and that is David Fincher's Zodiac, specifically the scene in which uh, Jake Gyllenhaal is downstairs in the basement with an old projectionist going through um, some boxes and storage because Jake believes that he has found the Zodiac killer. This sequence should be completely and utterly unnerving. There should be a lot of motion around. And David Fincher is a master at subtlety in that sense of space, that sense of haunting creepiness and dread sonically should envelop you. And that is why Zodiac, specifically this scene within Zodiac, is on my list. And there's actually a lot of David Fincher movies that would also fit the bill in this kind of genre. Seven is another great example of this, as is panic room if you are looking for atmospheric type effects true surround sound like oh what was that is that really happening outside or is that in my room those three films but specifically zodiac uh is just a tour de force now this one i have not added to my list because of current events this is actually always 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 been on my list and i understand that right now it seems awfully timely or convenient but i'm talking about the movie outbreak specifically there is a scene where dustin hoffman confronts uh morgan freeman's character inside a trailer an army trailer i call it the deep effing shit scene i use this as a dialogue test i use this as a center channel torture test because the sound department on this film was recording dialogue in basically a tin can. And so they're grappling with two things. They're grappling with wanting to get Dustin Hoffman's uh, dialogue 
just so, and so it sounds natural and intelligible. But they're probably also dealing with an awful lot of reflection points, i.e. metal walls and confined space. And I have a theory that throughout rehearsal, throughout everything, you know, Dustin was kind of at this level. And then when it came time for the take, he ramped it up to here. And the sound guys may or may not have been prepared. But it was the best take, and so it made it into the movie. This is like burlesque in a sense where I kind of use this as a torture test to see where on the frequency spectrum a center channel or just a speaker system on a whole is kind of tipped if it's a little bit more hot or rolled off because Dustin's vocals, when he raises his voice and yells at Morgan Freeman, um, they do clip. They clip. And based on how kind of harsh that, you know, that that we're not doing that sounds, if it sounds a little bit metallic, you're forgiven. Your system is not at fault. That is in the mix. If you don't hear that kind of metallic distortion of someone that was either applying a limiter to try and bring that down or, or put it within, you know, the confines of what is acceptable for a movie mix, then your speakers are rolled off, maybe even a little bit veiled. But if you hear that distortion, if you hear that sort of like, ooh, that didn't sound natural, then your speakers are actually very good and they're doing something completely right. This is another movie that I don't think a lot of people saw and that I don't believe will make a lot of home theater demos, but I'm talking about Draft Day starring Kevin Costner. And this is kind of a romantic sports comedy, but it, and it's, it's totally entertaining. It's one of my favorite uh, kind of adult romantic comedies of recent memory. But I picked this because it is a, it's a talking movie and it's a great just dialogue workout, especially dialogue of multiple characters speaking at once all over top of each other and still making sure that they're able to be heard, their, their lines delineated from one another. It's just a nice little kind of center fill, center of the sound stage torture test that I like to use. And there's one sequence in particular that I love because the dialogue comes fast and furious and then it cuts off and then you're kind of left with the room tone kind of filling your personal listening space and then dialogue comes back in and then they're holding and that's the negotiation that I call the pancake eating mother effer scene. Um, if you've seen this movie, you know exactly what I'm talking about, but there's heightened emotions, there's a lot of dialogue and then it cuts and that silence is very important. And then the dialogue comes back. So all of the things like mid-range torture test, it's all there, but it's not about volume or scale or or that kind of a thing. It's not a it's not a bombastic home theater test. It's more about nuance and subtlety and texture of the human voice. And that is why I've used this scene, and that is why I think it's a great home theater demo, let alone a fantastic movie. Now, getting back to a true home theater demo sequence, I'm talking about big explosions, dynamics, and epic sequencing. It's got to be Deepwater Horizon, uh, the explosion scene, when the oil rig explodes. This is, again, this is all about scale. This is about torturing the drivers and all of your speakers and in your subwoofer and taxing them to the absolute limit and seeing which, which one of you is going to flinch first because this sequence has it all. Now, the important thing to keep in mind is while it may be rife with bass, while it may be rife with uh, dynamics and stuff like that, there's still a lot of subtlety here, and there's a lot of subtlety specifically in the bass. It's one thing to rumble, but you shouldn't hear distortion. You shouldn't hear plodding, kind of trunk rattling Honda Civic bass. It should have texture, it should have movement, it should have real flair. So if you don't, if it just feels like blah, 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 instead of a low rumble, like something that is like coming towards you, not quite like the Jaws theme, nothing like that, but you just feel a build, a build, a build, and then boom, um, that's good. That's actually really, really good. Uh, subsequently, once, you know, the oil, you know, springs free, the sound of debris and rocks hitting the windows, those, those things need to be violent. They need to cause you, not pain, but they should cause you to go, ooh, you know, like that, you know, um, because they should hit with such visceral impact that it resonates because all of those things amplify the scene and the danger. And if you're not feeling those things from the sound, if you're not reacting like this from the sound, then you're not engaged 
in the action or the film or the character's well-being. And so this is why this has been a test that I've used for years. Now this one's kind of an oldie but a goodie and another one that I don't think makes a lot of demo tracks, especially not in 2020, but I'm talking about Sylvester Stallone's F1 or IndyCar Epic Driven. Specifically the quarter trick or the coin trick where Sylvester Stallone casually drives around a racetrack flipping quarters onto the road before hitting the pedal to the metal and racing around and picking those coins up with his back tire. It's a great sequence. It's a lot of fun. The music is a little bit on the distorted side. I think it was mixed just a little bit hot. But again, if your speakers are very revealing, if they're very neutral to the source, don't be afraid if you hear some of that. Um, it actually was like that in the theater. Um, but more specifically, again, this is a subwoofer test. Uh, there's a, on the very last coin, they do a macro shot, albeit it's, it's largely CG, and this was before CG was super, super awesome, but it's a CG shot of the, of the quarter kind of bouncing on the ground like this as the vibration of the car approaching is coming to come get it. And the base on that should start in the distance, and you should just feel it get bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger until it washes completely over you. And if your subwoofer is up to snuff, that will be a really awesome 10 or 15 seconds of bass that few movies do like that anymore. A lot of things are just kind of like, bam, as opposed to just, you know, coming at you. Um, and, and, I, and I like that. That's one of the reasons that this scene has remained on my list, despite it being, you know, kind of an older film. And Twister almost made my band list, but as Twister has aged and as I've aged with it, I've noticed a lot more sound design that has gone into this movie, specifically all of the intricate animal noises that were brought to bear in making the tornadoes sound as ferocious and violent as they were. And that is why this movie on a whole stays in there because yes, all the atmospheric stuff is present, you know, the rain and the hail and things like that. Like it's a surround sound workout and that's why it has stood the test of time as far as demos are concerned. But honestly, I listen for picking out the tiger and lion growls, the animal noises that get mixed in there, the shrieks, the, the, the truly organic everyday nature sounds that were brought to bear in mixing and making these tornadoes sound alive. And if you have resolving speakers, if you have them set up properly, uh, room EQ'd or room treatments, everything is just dialed in just so, then while it would be easy to get swallowed up in the scale of this film and all of the tornado sequences, I, I, I would urge you to listen more closely, maybe even at slightly lower volumes, in order to not be overwhelmed by the scale and instead focus intently on the little nuances and see how just how many different organic sounds you can pick out that made up the totality of the sound of the tornado. Lastly, and this is kind of like draft day and outbreak, but this is a movie that I use for the most natural kind of recording and sound quality possible. That is a movie that is obviously a movie, but that possesses sound as natural to real life as possible. And, 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 and that movie is Parkland. Now, if you didn't see Parkland, you are completely forgiven. It is the story about the day John F. Kennedy was assassinated. And so I understand that that is not, uh, you know, something that you just want to throw on willy nilly. It's, it's a movie you've got to be prepared for. But it features some excellent actors, some great performances, some surprisingly good performances from actors you may or may not see in those types of roles. But more specifically, it's just one of the more concise, well-recorded, natural sounding films that I've seen in recent memory. And so if you want to know if your speakers sound a little bit on the boxier side or they're constrained in, in, in terms of their projection, i.e. when someone's speaking, you know, they do. They sound like they're coming forward from a box, like not they're not they don't sound natural in their in their presence or their physical scale in your room. This is a great film to kind of focus and drill in on those things. 
Um, because it is. It, it, it's one thing for vocals to be clear. It's one thing for sound to emanate from the center speaker or the center of your screen. It's an entirely other thing for people to be lifelike in their physical, albeit virtual, scale in your room. And Parkland is a great film that kind of showcases this. Because all these other movies kind of do rely a little bit on just the scale of having more because home theater is about more speakers. Um, whereas Parkland can be enjoyed in stereo. Hell, it could be enjoyed in mono, but it, it could be enjoyed in stereo the same as it can be enjoyed in surround sound. It's just about getting the scale, the timber, the, just everything just so, so that it appears as natural as the action and the cinematography unfolding on the screen. Obviously, this is my list, and, and, and I, I hesitate to even call this the 10 best list. This is just the list that I've used for a number of years. So this is these are my 10 best demo movies or scenes, again, according to me, that, again, I have used to test home theater systems, big and small, uh, cheap and expensive for years. Now, there are some movies that I know you're going to comment down below and say, I can't believe you left that off. I left them off on purpose. Okay, I did. Fifth Element ain't on my list. Is it a great film? Yeah. Is it a great demo? Yeah. I've just seen it to death everywhere I've gone. Fifth Element, it's banned. Jurassic Park, banned. Matrix, banned. Independence Day, banned. Interstellar, banned. War of the Worlds, oh my God, banned. And that doesn't make them bad movies. They're great. I actually love all of those films and I own them personally. They've just been demoed to death. So my list, while there may be some that you were you saw coming, I try and keep my list fresh. I try and keep my list uh, a little bit different because while we've all seen Fifth Element, we've all seen Jurassic Park, um, I think we've seen them to death, and so we don't watch them with the same acuity that we may watch some of the films that I've mentioned, because maybe some of you haven't even seen these movies. And so you will be experiencing them for the first time, you will be coming at them with fresh eyes or ears, and who knows, you'll have a great experience. That is my list, and like the last music list, I wanna know what your list is, so let's start making a master list because, hey, let's face it, we're all gonna need a little something to watch here. So give us your best home theater demos down in the comments below. I know you will, and I am very much looking forward to it because like I said, I'm gonna need some new stuff to watch. And it, it doesn't have to be movies. It can also be TV shows, streaming, you name it, but let's get lists going down below and let's help everyone out. And let's try and pass the time as entertaining as possible. So that's it for this video, guys. Thank you guys so very much for watching, for continuing to tune in, especially given everything that's going on. I greatly appreciate it. I know Christy greatly appreciates it. And I just want you to know that we are fine and we are going to be here for you and we are going to continue to create content that hopefully you guys will find entertaining, if not just at least distracting. And that's it. You know the drill. The only person that has to like the sound of your system is you. So happy listening, everybody. Be well, take care of yourselves, and uh, we'll see you on the next video.